Just wanted to give it a little bit of a progress report. Uh, work on the van has been very slow over the last little while. The weather in the south of England has been absolutely terrible and uh, it has slowed progress uh, quite a lot. But uh, today we uh, have a fine day. It looks like um, the beginning of a nice uh, dry spell. Um, so we can crack on. I've got uh, a few holes that I need to cut in the van. Uh, next ones I need to do is to put the max fans in. So that's uh, quite a large hole that I'll be cutting in the roof there. Two of them, one at the front, one at the back. And the other thing that we're wanting to put on is the window. So there's the window there. It is uh, custom made for a Mercedes Sprinter. It's uh, done in what they call privacy glass. So it's not tinted, but the glass itself um, blocks uh, quite a lot of the UV. Um, and you can see there that it's got uh, ever so slightly, it has a curve on it and um, that's custom made to go into the door. So there's the door there and um, that window will fit perfectly into that shape. So we'll get the jigsaw out if the weather is fine tomorrow, cut a big hole there and uh, we'll install that window. Um, a few other things that uh, we've done, uh, getting ready now to do the tiling in the uh, toilet area or the bathroom. I've got a black, a little black hexagonal tile that's gonna go down there. I'm just building up the wall uh, at the back, which is going to hold the workings for the toilet. And you can see there we've uh, drilled a hole down through to uh, accommodate the air intake for the incinerator, the heat, uh, the incinerator toilet. Uh, and luckily that's positioned nicely. It's just missed the uh, chassis rail. So a few careful measurements have helped there. Uh, you can also see that the uh, electrics are going in on the right-hand side. Uh, that's my first lithium ion battery that's just sitting up there. There's gonna be three of those along on that shelf, which is above the wheel arch. I've just taken the panel off the side there. I'm just putting the uh, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter on that panel, and then I'll refit the panel. 12 volt fuse box on the end there. So that's where all the electrics are going to be, including the uh, battery charger for the lithium batteries. The batteries are just gonna be sitting on that shelf, but I'm going to make a cradle for them that will go all the way around and then it'll they, each battery will have an individual strap across the top to hold them in place. Um, so that should work quite well. They're uh, 100 amp hour lithium ion phosphate batteries. They're gonna be mounted in parallel. So it'll give us 300 amp hour of uh, power, which is gonna be more than enough. I've done a um, little bit of a schematic down here of uh, the electrics and the gas. I'll just pause there for a moment. Um, so that's basically everything um, that I can think of at least. I've had to refer back to this a few times and um, that helps me with uh, placement of switches, circuit breakers, the way we're gonna wire the battery, the sizing of the cables, etc. cetera. Um, all the cable is now run uh, it's taken quite a bit of time to get everything in and um, <clears throat> it's gone quite well. The good thing about the Sprinter, and I'm sure there's some other bands are the same, but I've got these ribs along the top and this is where my ceiling plywood is going to go attached onto these ribs. But just up in here, you can see that all of these are um, little holes that fit through the ribs and they are ideal for running cable up in the roof. So you can see there, uh, I've run some cable for the lights and the exhaust fans. So um, it's actually been quite uh, fortuitous having these little gaps that I can push the conduit through and then push the cable through. So most of the cable is now run 
up in the, the roof and down the walls. Uh, the main thing you want to be very careful of if you're going to do a conversion yourself is to know where you've put everything. And you can see there that I've marked off, I've already put the plywood lining on that side and I've marked off exactly where those cables come out. Um, when you start, and that's where the kitchen cabinet's going to be, and when you start putting stuff in, you want to make sure that you don't drill into any of the uh, cables that you've laid, um, because that's going to be a very expensive uh, mistake. The whole thing with doing a van like this is that, um, and for me, is that I've tried to minimise errors, and so far I've not made any major mistakes. A couple of minor ones that have been easy to fix, but nothing major. Um, I didn't want any major mistakes because they can be very costly to fix and they can be very frustrating. So, so far, um, with a good plan, as I said earlier, good plan, good design, uh, everything has actually worked out pretty well. So, touch wood, no major mistakes. Just want to talk a little bit about the um, Cinderella toilet. I'll just come back here. This is... Um, our incinerator toilet and I think it's a brilliant product you can see here that when you lift up the lid there is a um, little like a waxed paper bag that sits down in there so you put one of those down before you go and that then just drops when you hit the button the electric button at the back that will then drop into the incinerator so um, I'm just going to put my phone down for a moment over here and I'm going to open it up and show you how it all works. So it's pretty easy. It's just two hands on the side, pull it out and then it lifts up and that is the toilet now in the open position. And you can see here that there is the burner can or the, the uh, where the, the ash collects and, and where everything is burned underneath. So all you do to release it is just click that and you just pull that out and after you've done so many burns you just lift this bowl out and empty the ash outside. They say in the brochure that you can get 70 burns before you have to empty the ash which is pretty impressive and um, I say that the average length of the burn and it's all programmed it's pre-programmed so you don't have to do anything all you do is hit the button uh, the average length of the burn is about an hour so we'll get that fitted and um, we'll get on the road at some point do a road test and um, see if it is as good as they say on the tin so that's where we're at uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get the window installed um, I need to finish off installing all the electrics and get everything connected up I've also got the um, furniture board arriving tomorrow and um, what we're using is a board that comes from a company called Morlands it's a lightweight furniture board. It's 15 mil thick. It's about a third of the weight of normal plywood. And what we've gone for is that look. So it's a very dark sort of inky uh, navy blue. And that's just a mock-up I've done there of the um, switch panel and a USB socket that we're going to be putting in. So that's the sort of thing that I have will install onto the board. So the furniture board will be the... Um, the trim, I guess, that goes on the sides of all the framing, bathroom and the uh, kitchen, which is on this side here. And of course, in the front of my bench seat. So um, I'm looking forward to that arriving. Uh, the stuff looks like it's very good. It's used widely in the camper van and, and motorhome industry uh, because it is strong. It's lightweight. It's easy to use. And apparently it cuts quite nicely. So I bought a new a saw blade, an 80 tooth saw blade for my circular saw and the whole idea is to try and uh, cut it without ripping it too much so we'll see how we get on there. Um, I'm about to start putting some linings on the side so I've got a little bit more insulation to do 
and then I can start uh, also doing the lining. So I've got everything pretty much now. I don't need, I'm not waiting on any further deliveries. Um, so now it's just uh, hoping for a, a bit of fine weather and then we can get the holes cut in the side and uh, start hooking up the electrics, etc. So things are coming along quite well, um, but the process has been very slow and it has been hampered somewhat by the rain.